Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back. So a common sentiment that I've kind of pushed and seen a lot of you guys say is that you want to see the monster taming genre grow as a whole, not necessarily any particular game within the genre, but instead the genre itself. Now, obviously there's a ton of popular monster taming games, but many of these are popular in sort of a vacuum. When you think about Pokemon or Digimon, in many cases, nobody really says, wow, these monster taming games are so cool. What a great genre. In most cases, people will just talk about those games individually, which obviously makes sense, but to many, the wider genre isn't really known outside of these two game franchises. That said, in today's video, I wanna sort of talk about how we as a community can continue to grow the monster taming genre and what that could mean if we do. So just sort of a casual discussion video, but I think these are really important points if we wanna see monster taming games get pushed more heavily as a whole. All that being said, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's talk about what you can do to help grow the genre. Okay, so we're not gonna be going in order of what's most important or least important or anything like that. We're gonna sort of just be going point by point here. But firstly, a big part of growing the genre is actually going to include using the term monster taming. I know Steam has creature collector and that tag, so a lot of people are quick to state that creature collector is the best name for the genre. However, creature collecting is more so a subsect of monster taming, and I'll explain what I mean. So someone actually drew out this triangle on Twitter a long time ago. I can't remember who you are, I apologize for that, but it sort of is this diagram that had three major points of what makes up the monster taming genre. The idea is that every monster taming game to some degree has at least one or more of these attributes, and they would exist somewhere on that triangle. And these three components include monster raising, monster battling, and or monster collecting, or as Steam would say, creature collecting. That being said, a game does not have to include more than one of these to actually be a monster taming game. For example, look at Digimon Adventure PSP, a game we've been playing on the channel. You can't capture any of the monsters and the actual Digimon you use almost act like JRPG party members, but I'd still very much say this is a monster taming game. You play as a human character who has a Digimon. In this case, it's got monster battling aspects, but doesn't really have the raising or collecting, but you could still see that it's a monster taming game. So sure, games like Pokemon, Koromon, Nexomon, and Monster Sanctuary might fit under creature collecting and monster battling quite well. They don't necessarily encapsulate the entire genre. You could even have games where you only get one monster, but you're raising it like Tamagotchi, which would fit under the genre, just not under collection. Now that sort of leads to my next point. We need to stop arguing about which games are not monster taming games because of minor technicalities. If you tame or utilize monsters in battle, it's a monster taming game. It doesn't matter if these monsters are demons, robots, aliens, etc. I even made a joke a while back basically saying that you could have a game where you're a bunch of aliens and then you catch and tame humans and that would be considered a monster taming game just because of how it plays. And no, I'm not saying that everything's a monster taming game. There is such thing as a game with monster taming elements like RuneScape Summoning, Far Cry Primal, or even Horizon Zero Dawn where you can take over monsters. Those aren't monster taming games. They have some sort of taming mechanics. But when the gameplay is majorly focused around monster raising, collecting, or battling, whether or not you're taking direct control of the monster, or if it's fighting alongside you, being controlled by AI, it's still a monster taming game. Monster taming and Pokemon-like are not two in the same. Next, and this is a pretty good transition as well because we were just kind of talking about gatekeeping, what a monster taming game is, but also don't gatekeep certain games or just the genre in general. I know that for a lot of people, the last two decades of monster taming games were pushed way down in favor of more popular franchises, like Pokemon. However, despite this being the case, there are fans that have stuck around with these lesser known franchises, but you guys should not be gatekeeping these franchises from new fans. It wasn't until 2019 that I actually started branching off from Pokemon in terms of my personal monster taming interests and discovering all of these new monster taming experiences, at least in the video games department. I've always loved like Digimon, Metabots, etc. but was more so a fan of the anime. But my point is that I've never played Monster Rancher or Jade Cocoon or pretty much any of the Digimon games. And I have noticed that a lot of these communities are very gatekeepy and they feel like now suddenly all these new people have interest in their favorite games because maybe Pokemon hasn't been doing it for them. And while this is is definitely part of the case. The fact of the matter is that, like I've stated in the past, Pandora's box is open, so no matter how good the next Pokemon game is, 
people will still thirst for more monster taming experiences because at the end of the day, each game brings its own unique experience to the table. Trying to gatekeep these games and define other people as unworthy will do nothing but stifle the genre's growth. And I mean, if you don't believe me, just think about this. I started making YouTube videos in 2019. I'm someone that for all intents and purposes could have been subject to this gatekeeping. And honestly, I have been to an extent. I just don't care. But if a community is very unwelcoming, people are not going to want to stay in that community and they might enjoy these games but not want to actually spread the word and be a part of that greater, again, community. If I didn't have thick skin for stuff like this, I very well might have not expanded my channel's repertoire and I'm not trying to sound like I'm the sole reason that the genre has been growing because it's absolutely not the case. Me and the genre have sort of this symbiotic relationship with each other, but ultimately the genre's growth is part of the reason why I found out about it in the first place and I wanted to spread the word about these games, but I might not be here today if all of these communities were gatekeeping their games from other people. Not everybody's gonna wanna be part of a community that's toxic to newcomers. Now this sort of leads into what I kind of do and just because you don't have a YouTube channel or big social media following, this doesn't mean you can't contribute as well, but that's that's just spread the word. Telling your friends about your favorite monster taming games or when you see people asking for recommendations, recommending some of your favorite monster taming games and stuff like that to your friends will definitely help spread the word as well. Obviously don't start going door to door asking people if they've heard the good news of monster taming, but just recommending these games to your friends when asked and sort of just spreading the word when opportunities arise is definitely helpful. And finally, last but not least, and probably the most obvious, you have to spread the word. Wait, wait, I didn't mean to put that there. We're not there yet. But uh, in all seriousness, simply playing your favorite monster taming games and buying the ones you think are cool or just contributing to the community itself is more than enough. You guys who watch my videos day in and day out are doing a lot more for the genre than you might realize because the bigger my reach is on the platform, the more people I can expose to the monster taming genre and the more these games sell and the more players they have, the more demand there will be for that type of content and vice versa, back to that whole symbiotic thing that I was talking about. For example, the recent monster taming direct would have by no means been possible if not for you guys and moving forward I'm going to continue to do more and not stop until the idea of monster taming games being Pokemon ripoffs is a thing of the past and monster taming is more generally used in terms of terminology. I've noticed a lot of change over the past few years with a lot of games using monster taming when describing themselves, YouTubers using the terms, and ultimately supporting these games in the genre is what will make them grow. Everything will snowball from there. But yeah, just a quick discussion here. Basically the takeaway is that if you want to support the genre, just keep doing what you're doing. And if you're going to spill the blood of your enemies, make sure it's in game. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say again, thank you guys so much for all the support. We really have put the genre forward and while we still have a long way to go we're definitely making progress more japanese monster taming games are coming to the west larger studios are taking up monster taming as a serious endeavor there are so many monster taming games of quality that didn't exist just a few years ago and the genre is going to continue to grow and i think at some point we'll start to see massive entities making triple a monster taming games and depending on how those end up rolling out we might have to make sure they're not trying none of that fifa monetization stuff but we got a lot of time before that happens so if you guys want to stay up to date on the genre definitely like and subscribe you can check out my twitter discord and patreon linked below special thanks to the patrons especially jim hamilton dro ghost dark persona and exodus and i'll see you soon peace